Berenbrug Global, we've got companies all over the world. We're based out of Holland. Uh, Berenbrug USA is just down the street over here in Tangent, Oregon. Today, we're actually visiting Oregon State's Turfgrass Farm. They're doing work on putting greens. They do NTEP national trials, uh, you know, all sorts of variety trials. A lot of fungicide, uh, herbicide type trials. So we're going to be talking about Green Earth, which is a kind of a new product uh, portfolio we're introducing to at Berenberg USA uh, originated from you over in Europe and introducing more sustainable practices not only in our company but our products as well. We have different uh, test plots being done uh, and kind of just trying to see what the next aspect is, what we're going to look at for the future. So we break it down into four separate categories drought tolerance, salt tolerance, reduced mowing, reduced inputs. So within all these four pillars we're really driving at being more sustainable you know, if you can take and reduce your budget by 30%, just by the sheer ability of the grass being able to sustain the, the turf quality that you're looking for with 30% reduction, it's a huge favor for the guys. Drought tolerance is one of the main pillars. is so important because, you know, it's affecting any end user that may be a homeowner, a golf course superintendent, sports field. We're testing, researching all these rights to be the most drought tolerant, obviously, but we want to retain all these turf qualities as well but they've got to be excellent as we've got our varieties right now and then significantly improve on in the future as well. So salt tolerance is really key. People think salt in general of what you know, people might be applying to dethaw ice. So in a lot of the northern states when you get a lot of freezing, thawing, you know, it's eroding, flowing into the grass, really getting a higher concentration of salt in those areas. Uh, golf courses, sports fields, municipalities, they might see salt stress in the form of affluent irrigation. So you're applying affluent irrigation, the plants are taking up the water, a lot of the deposited salt are remaining. In terms of low inputs, you know, everyone's looking at, on our side, how to make this a very low input grass. But the real reality is, all these people just can't even apply fertilizer in the first place. So what we're seeing is you know, turf grass decline, where we have varieties that aren't performing as well under low nutrients. So we're really not just trying to make something survive under a low nutrient uh, atmosphere environment, but we're trying to make it excel in that condition. So in terms of reduced mowing, we're really tackling that at the labor side of things. Being a former golf course superintendent, I, I knew labor is one of the biggest key things that is going to be affecting uh, golf course superintendents and sports turf managers around the country. So we got to figure out a way to save a guy a, a day of mowing. You know, if you're mowing fairways three days a week and you can take and actually go down to two days a week, you know, there's quantifiable labor you're actually saving, not only in labor, but you're also saving in fuel costs, you're also saving in equipment costs and repairs. Either the school municipalities, they're only able to mow once a month. So in those cases, you know, they're stressing the turf plan out, they're scalping. So we need a grass that can just not produce as many clippings, as well as not have to be mowed as often. Now if you go to the professional sectors like golf courses, sports fields, they're mowing all the time, it's incorporated into their budget, but if they could you know, shave off one mow, two mows every other week or so, that's just more money to their budget that they can spend on something else. So it's not only you know, trying to do the best we can now, but plan for the generations to come and ensure you know, our planet can essentially have better green spaces for others to enjoy. Yep.